Stuart, lovely to see you again. So what's on the agenda today? Yeah, well, first, Kate, I'd like to thank all those that had comments and feedback from the last episode of 26. Really useful stuff, and I've, I've used that to influence policies as we develop them in the, in the NCHQ. What I want to do today is talk about the new employment model, or NEM. So what exactly is NEM? Well, NEM is, it came out of the Strategic Defence Review, and it's, it's an umbrella change programme looking at some key areas or terms and conditions of service for our personnel. So why do we need a new model? What's wrong with the existing one? Well, what we recognise is that our terms and conditions of service haven't dramatically changed for the last 40 years. And so in order to meet the needs of today's Navy, but more importantly for tomorrow's Navy, we need to refine and change these. And it's going to be looking at things like accommodation, um, ensuring that the accommodation, both single living accommodation, service family accommodation, actually um, have an element of stability to them, but recognise mobility may be required to meet the service need. And things like career structures, the Navy of tomorrow is going to be drastically different from the Navy of today. It will have aircraft carriers, Type 26, etc. And, and so the structures need to change in order to be ready for tomorrow. And what other areas are key? You've mentioned a couple of important ones there. Engagements, uh, training and education, and also pay and allowance reform. And it may encompass things like um, paying an individual for the skill that they have for the service. And not necessarily attribute the pay to rank. We could divorce those two. OK, so you've got those five areas under the, the umbrella of NEM. Yep. But in a way, are people going to look at NEM and think, do you know what, it's just another area of change. Everything in the Navy is changing yep. at the moment. Do we need to worry about this? Well, it's nothing individuals need to worry about. And what I would like to reassure individuals is that this is a positive uh, opportunity for people to influence the, the needs of the future Navy. Uh, but nothing's going to change until at least April 15. And for some of them, the more thorny issues, not till 2020. I mean, it almost feels as though we're having this conversation a few months too early because you haven't had the board yet in the autumn and it is a really long-term project. Yeah. So why are we talking now? Well, because it's an important issue that I want our people to be aware of. Um, not only because is it going to potentially fundamentally change the terms and conditions of service, um, albeit in some time scale, but they have an opportunity to, and we listen to their feedback and um, we're influencing now the recommendations that are going to the Defence Board. And one of the things that we're hearing at the moment, people want to know what's happening about annual leave. Is that going to be reduced? Well, the annual leave is, the allowance we have is very important to the maintenance of morale and operational capability. Um, at the moment, there's no plans to change the current leave allowance of 38 days per year. And sticking with leave, buyback leave, is that going to happen or not? People are asking the question, is it just a rumour? Um, the short answer to that is no. Leave is very important, as I've already said. And we've taken those thoughts and uh, opinions into the MOD. Um, but at the moment, um, what we don't want to do is engender a culture where people might actually um, take money instead of taking leave. They need to take leave so they can come back and work refreshed. OK, and what about families? Will they still be supported? Well, families are always very important to those serving in the, in the Navy and the Armed Forces. They will continue to be supported by the single service welfare provision, but also by the evolving uh, Armed Forces Covenant and community covenants where they exist. So what would your final message be to service personnel during this uncertain time of change? Well, I would say don't be, don't be frightened of the change, embrace it. And what the Fleet Commander said previously is go for it. There's an opportunity where we can influence the future um, terms and conditions of service for our people uh, to the positive. Since we filmed this, the Future Armed Forces Pension Scheme has been delivered by 2SL, details of which can be found in Galaxy 24 of 2012.